Amen, amen. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us this morning on our Facebook live stream as we have gone totally virtual in the month of December. We hope to change that come January, but we'll finish out these last two weeks as virtual. So we're glad you're joining us here this morning. You could have tuned in anywhere. There are many Facebook lives. There's many churches on TV, uh, podcasts, even radio. Today you have chose to worship with us here at Meadowland Baptist Church right here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So we say welcome. We say Merry Christmas because this is the week we celebrate the birth of Christ. One of the things that I've been recently talking about with several people at work is that they had explained to me or told me that here recently they just haven't felt like they were in the Christmas spirit. That things just didn't seem like Christmas. They couldn't get into that spirit uh, they had kind of felt like they were numb or that it wasn't even December or that Christmas wasn't even approaching. And so I spoke to them and simply said, Christmas is not about a spirit. Christmas is not about a certain time of year. Christmas is about a celebration, the birth of Jesus Christ. We don't come together because of trees or gifts. We come together because of the birth of Christ. And we come to celebrate his birth for he was born to die. Die to forgive our sins if we would receive that and believe that. So if you're joining us here this morning and you feel like you've not had the Christmas spirit, I encourage you to get the Holy Spirit to understand that we are here today to celebrate the birth of Christ. Over 2,000 years ago, our King came down to earth, born an infant in a lowly manger, the lowest form of creation, and lived a life and led an example. And one day our king will return to call this church home. This past year we've seen a lot of promises made because it was an election year. And in elections people will promise a lot of things or they will try to tell you their agendas. And once they're elected we try to hold them to their agendas but usually the things that got them elected aren't the things they follow through with. Today I want to talk to you about the king has come and there is a king's agenda for the reason that he did come. The Bible is ultra clear about the agenda of the king, Jesus. If you want to turn with me today, I'll be in several different places, but I'll be in Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 3 and verses 8 through 9. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. In verses 8 through 9, Isaiah prophesied about what the agenda of the king would be. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for the morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate the robbery of the burnt offering. I will direct their work and their truth, and I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. And all who see them shall acknowledge them, and that they are the posterity of whom the Lord has blessed. This exact passage in Isaiah is the same one that Jesus quoted in the synagogue from the scroll. And he stopped short because it almost got him killed. Because we know in the beginning that Jesus came. But what they didn't want to see is that he was the Messiah. And that when he returns again, he will come with the vengeance of the Lord. He came in peace. He came in good tidings. He came to set the captives free, to give us liberty, to break the shackles of sin. 
But when He returns, when the King returns, He will come with the wrath of God. It is better to receive the King now that He has come than to wait for when He returns. He stopped short because proclaiming this year had already got him in trouble. He had already cited Scripture in front of the religious leaders proclaiming his Messiahship and this upset them so bad they wanted to stone and kill him right there. Isn't it amazing how when you stand up for what is right, which is the Word of God, that people even who proclaim to know it won't always agree with it. In this year and in this time and in this season, no better time than right now to not only get into the Word of God, but to believe the Word of God and receive the Word of God. You see, the King's agenda, Jesus' agenda, is to announce good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted and grant them freedom. If you're here today and you don't know what true freedom is, it can only be found in the King. It can only be found through Jesus Christ. Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus is still doing these things, but more importantly, Jesus carries out His agenda through the church, the body of Christ. And we ourselves are the church, and we are to continue to do what Jesus Christ did. He modeled the life for us. He modeled a way in which we were supposed to live and supposed to be obedient and submit to the Word of God, the will of God, and be empowered by the Spirit of God. Did you know that when you go to the doctor for a broken finger, if you have a broken finger, what they will do is they will take that broken finger and they will attach it and wrap it to a finger that is what? Not broken. Because what it needs is something to be up against so that it will give it support until it has had time to heal. Ladies and gentlemen and brothers and sisters, that is exactly what the church is here to do. We are to be with the broken. We are to be with the oppressed. We are to preach good tidings to them. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men who are of the King, who have belief and faith. And even though we may not be gathered in the building, we are still the body. So I encourage you to reach out to the broken. Reach out to the bruised. Reach out to the oppressed, the downhearted. And bind them together with you. That they might be restored also in Jesus Christ. Some of the things that we get carried away about this season have a tendency to fall under pleasing the world rather than pleasing Christ. I, I know several people, I feel like each year their tree gets bigger. Their tree gets almost like Griswoldish, and they get more gifts. I had a neighbor I grew up with for years that he had this big open floor plan, and I feel like his tree got bigger every year, and there were more and more gifts under that tree every year. It was insane how big it would be. But you know what? When Christmas is over, and the tree has died, and you've tossed it out, and all the gifts have been opened, and there's paper piled up, and your trash is full, and you're wondering where the trash man is because they haven't run on the right day and you've missed them. What do you have left? Are you living in worldly conviction rather than the king's kingdom's conviction? Let me explain it better to you like this. A lot of people say if you would just teach the birth of Christ and that the King has come and stay away from the crucifixion, we would be more apt to follow Jesus. You see, people want to love, hear about His love, His grace, and His mercy. They don't want to hear about His conviction and the reason that He truly came, which was to set us free from our sin in a fallen world and a fallen human nature. The Bible tells us that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And there's only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ the Son. And in order to receive that, we must die to ourselves and have faith that is given from God to believe in the one and only Son, Jesus Christ, and the atonement of our sin through His blood that was shed on Calvary. And when you explain that to people, people don't want to humble themselves to the King. They'll accept the babe in the manger. They'll accept the Christmas They'll accept all of these things, but they'll say, stay away from the crucifixion. They said, just let us know about the example of Jesus and we'll follow that. Well, the truth is, if we just live by the example of Jesus, let's take the very first thing. Jesus led a sin-free life. Can you do that? You see, we wouldn't make it past the first example. 
Jesus was sinless and we are sinful. Day in and day out, we never measure up. And so if we're just going to follow Jesus' example, we'll do what He did and we'll fail at it and there'll be no salvation in it. And so basically we'll be professing Christians who are on our way to what? Hell. You can't live up to the example of Jesus. And the only righteousness we have is the belief and faith in Jesus the Son that forever sets us free. If we're going to follow His example, let's get away from the world and let's focus on not only just the birth, but let's focus on the life, the death, and the resurrection of the King. And more importantly, our anxious anticipation for His return. You see, there was a concert violinist who was giving a, a symphony performance and he played his heart out. And at the very end, the whole, whole congregation of people stood to their feet and said, bravo, and clapped their hands. And clapped their hands and said, encore, encore. But the violinist buried his face in his hands and began to weep bitterly. And someone said, why do you hang your head? Everyone is standing giving you an ovation. He said, not everyone. He said, the man in the front row has not stood, has not clapped. And that is my teacher. And if it's not good enough for the teacher, then it's not good enough for anyone else. If you're going to follow Jesus Christ, remember He is the teacher. Stop trying to impress the world. and Start following what He has taught. Because what good will it do your soul to impress the world but to fall short of the glory given through Jesus Christ, the Son? The King came to flip the agenda of the powers that be. He didn't come to rule like we had seen kings rule on this earth. He said His kingdom was not of this world. Had it been, He would come down with legions of angels and have took over. He speaks of a kingdom to come. And we continue in that work today. The church gets to serve as a conscience to people in its state, local, and even government of the nation and the world. We speak through the Word of God, through prophecy that was given years and years and years ago on behalf of Jesus Christ, on how we should live, how we should treat others, and how we should be doing things. They don't always listen, but we need to side with the Word of God rather than the world without God. John the Baptist prepared it for everyone. He said in John chapter 1 verses 14 through 18, he said, and the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and full of truth. John bore witness of him and cried out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me because he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received the grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father has made him known to us. You see, the kingdom of Jesus the king's agenda was to reveal God to us. To show us the fullness of God's truth and the fullness of God's grace. Today, we not only learn from Jesus and his revelation of God through the word, through his life and what he shared, we see how he lived. We hear him and his teachings and we see what he accomplished in the world. You and I get to learn how to live and how to make a difference in the world around us. Even if it's just in our own home. Even if it's just in our neighborhood, our workplace, our local body of Christ. Where we volunteer at or what we do with our time, effort, energy, and finances. We can make a difference. And that is the example Jesus said. It's amazing how when we not only believe that Christ has come, but when we receive that Christ has come, how greatly we rejoice in it. Not just at the birth, but every day of the year. It's not just about Christmas. It's not just about Easter. It's 24-7. 
seven days a week, 365 days a year, that we have joy that the world can't take away because we believe and rejoice in the truth that was given from God Almighty through the Son and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Psalms 126, verses 1 through 6. Psalms 126, verses 1 through 6. Tell us about the people who receive it will rejoice in it. It says, When the Lord brought us out of captivity, those of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues were filled with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Bring us back out of captivity, O Lord, under your care as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. We often think that being a Christian, a follower of Christ, will always give us a life of everything is going to be good. It is good, but it does not mean we are not tested. It does not mean that we do not go through trials. It does not mean that we don't go through tragedy. It does not mean that we are not oppressed. It does not mean that we are not afflicted. Jesus Christ, even in His example, He was beaten, He was mocked, He was sped upon. His friends betrayed Him. People turned against Him. And if they did it to Jesus, they will do it to you. But I love how it says that if we sow in tears, we will always reap in joy. Because as long as we continually follow Him, the King, and His agenda, He will always be sovereign in all things. And His namesake will always get glory. And He will always have His way. I looked up the definition of sheaves because it's not a term that we use now today. I mean... You may use it. I've never used it other than reading Scripture. But now, if you all still talk that way, more power to you. Sheaves simply mean this. A bundle of grain stalks laid lengthwise and tied together after reaping. A bundle of objects of one kind. You know, there's a lot of people who say today that they are a Christian and a follower of Christ. But they're not wheat. They're what the Bible calls a tear. They're not sheep. They're what the Bible calls a goat. And one day the king's agenda will be to rightly divide the sheep from the goat, the wheat from the tear. And those who are bundled together for his name's sake will be called upon high. And those who have been faking it. My friends, I couldn't stand before you today without telling you the truth. Those who are faking it will spend eternity in hell. You see, the king's agenda came to unify us so that we would glorify God. That we would be sanctified and set apart from the world. That we would be influential for the kingdom's sake. For the word of God, for the will of God. That we would die to self and we would stop focusing on what the world says needs to happen and we would start focusing on what the word says will happen if you're going through something today know that you're not alone and every tear you cry God knows they are numbered but everything that you do for God's kingdom will always turn up profitable for his name's sake so you may be sowing in tears but one day you will be reaping in joy because the master, when he comes together, as the old hymn says, he will be ringing in the sheaves. The king's agenda for his people is good. And for good, he came. When you receive this agenda, you receive joy for an eternity. Whether clouds, whether storms, whether tempests, and whether tossed to and fro by the wind, you have an anchor that holds in the king. Are you ready to move past what the world calls the Christmas spirit and start celebrating the true meaning of Christmas? 
the victory we have in the birth of the king. The arrival of the king that grants us freedom from the bondage of sin. The one who gave sight to the blind, who made the deaf hear, the lame to walk, and more importantly, the dead to rise. Jesus did not come to make bad men good. Jesus came to make dead men and women alive in Christ. To carry on the mission of Jesus Christ. To truly be His church. That we would wrap the broken unto us until Christ made them whole. That we would not worry about the world, but that we would focus on our teacher and what He thinks of us. And even more so, we need to understand that we love Him because He first loved us. We know Him because He first knew us. We seek Him because He first sought us. We call to Him because He first called to us. We choose Him because He first chose us. And we come to Him because He first came to us and said, Come. I want to ask you today, are you ready to receive the King of Kings? One day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And so I pray that you get what Christmas is about now, what Easter is about now, the life of Jesus, the death of the King, the resurrection and the return. Because if you wait until that day where every knee bows, and every tongue confesses, you've missed Christmas altogether. And it will be too late to swear allegiance to the King. It will be too late for salvation. You will receive wrath and not joy. Today I pray that you not only believe it, but that you receive it. And that you repent of your sin. Be made new and find the joy that only comes from the Lord. Even if you're sowing in tears, you will reap in joy. For his kingdom. If you rejoice today. If you believe today. Then let us as the people of God. Continue to reach out. Continue to speak out. And continue to live out. In all that we do. I want to thank you all for joining us today. I hope that you have found the true meaning of Christmas. That it's not necessarily. About trees and gifts. And decorations. It's about the king who left the splendor of heaven to come live among us on earth. The Word made flesh. The freedom given. The life lived. The example left. And the command to go ye therefore and make disciples. You know, it may not be a white Christmas this year. But there will come a time when we need to reflect of a dark, still, quiet night in a lowly manger where Christ was born unto us. This day, a Savior was given. Will you receive Him? Is there room in your life for Him? Because He will forever change your life for the here, for the now, for the hereafter. Amen. Thank you all for joining us today. As always, please like, share, comment, help us get the gospel out. Before we close, just a couple of things. It is the end of the year. And if you would, for those who continue to support us financially, we say thank you. If you'd like to mail in your tithes and offerings, you can do that by sending them to Meadowland Baptist Church, 1188 Detour Road, right here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Our zip code is 42101. If you'd like to give online, you can go to our website at meadowland.live. Click on the giving tab, and you can set it up to give one time or set it up to give continuously. 
We thank you for your prayers, your support, and even your financial support. And at the end of the year, don't forget, it is a time of increased giving that gets us through. We have been virtual in the month of December. And we'll let you know more next week when we plan on resuming in person. Be safe. Enjoy your Christmas time. Enjoy the time of the new year that is to come as we look forward to a 2021 if given by the Lord and Savior. But more importantly, I want to remind you about tonight, 5 p.m. Join us for our Worship at Home series. Tonight, we'll be going over some Advent things in our home. And also, stay tuned for this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. as we will have a special Christmas message from Meadowland Baptist Church. Have a great week. Have a blessed Christmas. And keep Jesus at the center of all that you do. Thanks again for watching. Keep reaching out. Keep speaking out. Keep living out. Amen.